Hi and welcome back to what's new in Photoshop CS6 part 2. My name is Ludmilla Adams, creator of Fashion Chalkboard. Okay, so something funny happened. Um, while this is obviously beta and um, it crashed when I started talking a bit of 3D here. <laughs> and now that I opened this document or uh, Photoshop CS6 again, it actually recovered all of my um, last work. So that's brand new, right? That we have now Photoshop recovering. So that's pretty neat. I would still make it a habit to obviously always save your work. But um, I had started to work with, which I'm going to do over now, with this croquis that I created inside of Illustrator. So you can see that this is all vector art. And I wanted to show off a now integrated feature that is in CS6 with Photoshop, but if you are in CS5, you can go to Adobe Labs where you also downloaded the Photoshop test version of CS6. And pretty much um, it's called Oil Paint. You want to make sure that your image is in RGB. Um, for some reason, if I go to image mode and make it CMYK, it won't allow me to use oil paint. So once again, image mode, RGB, and you should be fine. Um, if you are from CS5 and you want to play around with this without having to download CS6, you still have to go to Adobe Labs and download something called Pixel Bender. Okay, but now in CS6, um, if I go to Filter, Oil Paint, and I'm on the layer where I want to apply it, you can see that you have a lot of different options here to play around with strokes and stylization. You can see how quickly it creates this beautiful rendering, which um, I would suggest sometimes to go in segments first. So you can obviously lasso or however you do your best selections, copy parts that you might want to work on in detail, copy them and then apply a different strength of the filter to different areas. Okay. So that was one part. The other part, um, you can apply this to photos. Um, this stuff right here, I don't have it before. Now let's see, actually this is a recovered one. So let me just go to, dun, 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 dun. have no details. Okay, so that's the before, has no details. There's not a high resolution. So you can see that once I put in the oil filter, you can't really tell what it is anymore. Okay, so then I wanted to talk about how you should really try and experiment with 3D features, which are really nice. You can make this into a texture that then applies onto whatever you make into 3D. And for that, I have to open up the file so I kind of played around. with some water coloring and then you can see here that I applied it onto a word which is quite easy to do. Um, for 3D I recommend that you have your layers, your properties and 3D open. I'm going to do this really quickly because I didn't plan on doing a whole 3D demo because I'm still so new to it myself. But I'm just going to do what I did before which is to spell out fashion with my type tool. And then right away you can, when you are still in your type tool, press on the 3D button, which gives you a couple of different things. You want to stay in your move tool, but you can see right away you have a lot of these different options, environments, properties. And when we click on these different parts here, here you can see how it moves it around. And that's the pane of your 3D environment. And then if you click on the word itself, you'll start activating. And I always tell my students to pay attention to what Illustrator or Photoshop is whispering. So here in 3D, it becomes really important. You have a bunch of hints right here, what you could do. You could rotate different axes and there's a camera view. So if you click here, you have this box. And in this box, once that's active, you can move you can make 
a rotation happen or you can actually scale and let me just rotate this from a different angle and then once you click on this little box in the center you can actually scale it up or down and then if you want to see it without all the fuss around it you just click on a different tool and you can see here that it doesn't really look that well at this angle however it has a lot to do with the material so if I click here you can see how everything is kind of dark so if I start changing things around um, you can bring more life into this I've kind of went ahead and in my 3d so you can see this word fashion is my 3d object and I kind of set all these to pretty dark value so you can see I'm changing it now and this window here is sort of like your um, patterns but these are materials that you can use so I specified a couple of new ones here which are not in here now you can see here that you can play around with different ones and you can see how it's 3d so you have different positions for material so you have a front inflation bevel extrusion and so on okay so when I was playing around I was able to put a couple of different um, textures on the front the back the extrusion and then additionally you also have a lot of different options such as um, shining a light on it so we always start out with this infinite light but then if you click on this little light bulb here you can create new lights such as point lights and spotlights which is quite fun for you to play with oops and I need to be in my move tool for this to work all right um, another one that I did really quickly is um, I made this fabric into a 3d texture and the result from that applied onto the word fashion looks somewhat like this so you can see that it's quite exciting um, to start playing around so just imagine a heart shape and glitter and so on and so on which brings me to my last little thing that I wanted to show you which there's some really fantastic options if you ever have to blur an image whether it's for your catalogs lookbooks and so on so come back for a quick session three bye thanks for watching